assistant AG nominee Kristen Clark is um, is being grilled by Republicans. And this is she wrote in a, well. I'll let her explain it because why not? Well, um, this is John Cornyn thinks he's found something. He thinks he's got her by the short and curlies. And it, yeah, it, this this is it. I mean, how do you you have a taxpayer supplied staff? How do they not run interference? Thank you, Francie. Um, how do you you have all these? I don't have a staff. Whatever you do, don't bring this up at the massive hearing that's going to be televised with with the assistant AG, who's a black woman. Just there's some, you know, you don't have to walk on eggshells. You can talk to her like she's a human being, because she is. But you, but you, there might be a couple of areas where, uh, boss man, I noticed you've got a couple of blind spots, and I really would like to help you out. Don't bring up. The, I know you think it's a good idea. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Well, maybe there's a, a misprint, and may, but I'm sure... In your head. You can clear it up for me. Dating back to your days when in, in school when you seemed to argue that African Americans were genetically superior to uh, Caucasians. <laughs> appear? Appear to. Appear to. Now, not to everyone, not to the other people at Harvard that she was going to school with, appear to wait. It gets good. Is that correct? Um, no, Senator. Um, that I believe you're referring to an op-ed that I wrote at the age of 19 about the bell curve theory, a racist book that equates... Excuse me, shots fired. John Cornyn and Tom Cotton and all those guys actually think there's uh, the bell curve was right on the money. ...DNA with genetics and race. As a black student at Harvard that time, we took grave offense uh, to this book. It was co-authored by a Harvard uh, professor. We held a, did a number of events to speak out against the book, and this op-ed opened with a satirical uh, reference uh, to, to the state. Yeah, the old, uh, can you imagine if I had said such a thing? ...statement that you just noted. Um, contemporaneous reporting by the campus paper made very clear that uh, this was... Other people who were also doing satirical and critical writings about said book referenced her piece and also know her and were working with her and other students on the campus in, you know, in the realm of reality. This was not a view that I espoused. What I was seeking to do was to hold up a mirror and put one racist theory alongside another to challenge people as to why we uh, were unwilling to wholly reject the, the racist theory that uh, defined the bell curve book. So this By the way, at this point in the hearing, uh, Tom Cotton had to be airlifted to a fainting couch. Um, thank you, Pecos. This is, a, this is satire? Absolutely, Senator. Yeah. So, you could have asked. You could have read the rest of the paper. Maybe. And where was that published? The, in the student paper, um, the Harvard Crimson. And there is contemporaneous reporting from that time, from that day, that makes clear that these were not views that I espoused, Senator. Oh, well, huh. Gosh, I, I guess I, you just took a giant shit on my entire argument. Let's see, who's up next? Uh, Utah um, uh, porn purchasing capital of the United States Senator Mike Lee um, uh, is not having any of this. Case. Ms. Clark, I want to read a non-exhaustive list of, of um, elements. A non-exhaustive list. Meaning that it, it, er, you think everything is racist. Of the American society, uh, elements that you have uh, at one point or another described in the past as racist. Police departments, federal agencies, Airbnb, election laws designed to combat fraud, the work... The election laws designed to combat fraud. Because obviously it's not election laws. Uh, the, and the combat fraud part is just, you know, their way of covering for the fact that they mean, by fraud, we mean, of course, black people voting. Um, and she, at no point did she say the idea of federal agencies 
or the idea of police departments are in and of themselves by existence racist, but police carry on. Um, reading comprehension seems to be the real problem amongst uh, Republican senators these days. Workplace, America's DNA, the Virginia Military Institute, the healthcare industry. <laughs> wow, the Virginia Military Institute gets a gets a name drop right next to America's DNA. As in racism is in America's DNA. It's in its it's in its creation because of the slave trade and the like. And it, 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 yeah, industry, federal courts, and the Department of Justice. Now you've worked uh, for the Department of Justice and, and and with the federal courts. Were those institutions racist when you worked there? Look, they obviously let black people work there. <laughs> I've had black people work for me. Clearly that proves I'm not racist because I hire them to do uh, tasks I don't want to do myself. See what I mean? So, um, Senator, I don't have the, the context for the list that you just... Um... Look, he said, you think they're racist, explain yourself. Have Brand you described them as racist in the past? I generally use the term discrimination. I'm a, a lawyer, I follow the facts, and I believe that uh, there are instances where you may find that one particular employer or were they one racist particular when you worked landlord there? engaged. Were they racist when you worked there? So now that they're hiring black people, is slavery still here? Is that what you're saying? Look, we don't want to fix anything, okay? Get this, get this, we've made We've, we've made this as unracist as we're willing to go. I have drawn a racist line in the sand, and I'm sorry, but I need, we need to build a wall around the racism that I hug like a whoopee. Engaged in discriminatory conduct, but I don't, I don't deem institutions or structures to be blanketly racist. <laughs> were, were they racist when you worked there? <laughs> yeah, we've heard you ask the same question. Look, you're black. You obviously got a paycheck. I, I didn't follow the question. Well, so. uh, was I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> it's basically like, Jesus Christ, man. It, his point is, now that, they now that we've had a black president, isn't racism over? Can't you honestly just get up? So can't we just go back to being as racist as we were? Um, now that we've had a black president, which of course I didn't, wouldn't vote for, and of course said was the worst president that ever happened, and was obviously a you know a Trojan uh, horse or a you know for for communism, and was really Nigerian born. Um, it, can we just forget? Uh, can we use the fact that he we had black presidents and there are black people working government to to just give a pass to? Uh, was the U.S. Department of Justice a racist institution? No, Senator. The Justice Department is anchored by dedicated career employees who work hard every day to follow the facts uh, and to, to adhere to the law. Yeah, now you say that. But was it racist when you worked there? <laughs> Jesus. Republican Senate. I, I, oh, God. And then, of course, uh, in the... Um, uh, the delicate sensibilities of Republicans' uh, department. Uh, apparently, Ms. no one can hold Ms. a Cl candle to, um, um, I guess, dinner theater Ichabod Crane. If I'm going to go full Stephen Colbert on my descriptions about people, um, Tom Cotton. Mark, was Officer Darren Wilson justified when he shot and killed Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014? So there, there is a there is a trial underway right now, Senator, and I, like millions of people, am sitting back and, and watching the trial as it plays out, and uh, I'm prepared to accept the verdict of the jury. In November of 2020, just a few months ago, that was not exactly what you said. You said that on this day, a grand jury chose not to indict Darren Wilson for the killing of Michael Brown. It's a powerful reminder of why we need to make clear that black lives matter. We must demand that the Department of Justice resume pattern practice investigations and expand prosecutions involving. Right. 
Yeah, I, I go. I mean, I I can help you with the heavy lifting here, Tom Cotton, with your teeny little feather brain. Apparently, his, he got his last name from what's between his ears. But the the primary thing is that, uh, regardless of the outcome in the Darren Wilson case, um, part of the suspicions that the black community has about shootings like this have a lot to do with the the pattern and practice aspects of uh, that are going on. And if you can deal with those things, then when the Darren Wilson shootings occur. The public doesn't immediately think that, well, this is yet another in an obvious uh, chain of events that are all linked together. They go, no, this, this instance is just that, an instance. When you can break up the pattern and you make efforts to try and get rid of the racists that are in police departments or the practices that might make them deal with um, certain people differently than they deal with others, then you can eliminate from the public's mind and the concern or the overall, you will make an understanding that, of course, black lives matter. In, especially, uh, in some cases, black cops who are gunned down by, uh, uh, you know, criminals of all stripes at some point. Their life matters, too. But you don't have the public having to chase that because the incidents of those circumstances are well documented. Um, uh, there's, there's care taken to show all the sides of that, whereas you don't have them hiding the evidence or the body cam footage of a circumstance like that for a long period of time, making people, you know, wonder and worry. And then, like school shootings, there's another one that happens. So, uh, her prescription is exactly right. And that the Darren Wilson uh, uh, case, however you believe it went, the reality is, is that people wouldn't attribute that circumstance to a pattern if there was more work done to deal with an obvious pattern that does it ex does exist seem logical involving police shootings i would also yeah <laughs> and to point out that eric holder's department of justice in march 2015 conducted an extensive review of officer Derek wilson's conduct and concluded that it did not support the filing of criminal charges they issued an 87 page report that was done under the watch of your fellow nominee Benita gupta um, does, is it her responsibility to read, uh, a report you're talking about that references this particular case when she's not in that job and it, someone else's, all right. I'm going to add, in fact, there have been three separate investigations. So you're okay with, uh, Anita Gupta get it. Then you're going to just, they're going to sail right through Tom Cotton because you agree with their perception of the circumstance. Yes that have cleared Officer Wilson of wrongdoing. And just last year, however, just last year in June, you sent a letter to Congress in which you described the Michael Brown case as, quote, prosecutorial decisions not to indict police because of impenetrable qualified immunity for police and acquittals based on racism, end quote. Why do you continue, despite all this evidence to the contrary, from many of your fellow Democrats, to refuse to take an answer on whether, or take a position on whether Officer Darren Wilson was justified or not in the shooting of Michael Brown. And, and Senator, if I can, I want to correct uh, my answer. I, I, I indicated that there was a trial still uh, going on, which is... She thought you were talking about the Chauvin case because, it, you know, at this point, there are enough unarmed black man shootings that it's easy to mix them up. It's kind of like school shootings at this point. He can kind of, which one are we talking about? Not the case. So I just, I just want to um, offer up that correction. I think that um, in general, there, there, there is a need for greater police accountability. There is a bipartisan agreement on this issue. I know that this body did a lot of work last so, Ms. year. Ms. Clark, those are, all, those are all policy questions, and we'd have that policy debate. But I Is there a policy debate? And this is when Dick Durbin responds to, you know, to Tom Cotton's uh, issue. Hold on. If you won't answer the simple question, yes or no. Let's turn to another case. By the way, um, anybody who expects a simple yes or no question from someone who's going to work as an attorney general or, uh, you know, in, in the Department of Justice is just being an asshole to some degree, Democrat or Republican, because... The, I, we have an extraordinarily complex legal system because of the voluminous number of freedoms that we enjoy. The fewer freedoms you have, the easier it is to say yes and no on laws. In North Korea and in China, quite frankly, and in Russia and a lot of, although there's a lot of wiggle room there, I would guess, 
um, not for the better. But it's easy to say no. If you get caught doing that, you're just done. But in our society, that we recognize mitigating circumstances. We recognize, we, we have, I mean, uh, the, the woman who shot, uh, it, you know, the, the young man yes, in Minneapolis, like, what was it, a week ago, less than a week ago now? It's, uh, God, it's hard when they overlap as much as they do. Um, that just, that just happened and she's going to be charged with second degree manslaughter because there's a first degree manslaughter and there's third degree manslaughter, just like there's first, second, and third degree murder and there's depraved indifference and, uh, all, you know, messing with a corpse. There's all kinds of like, there are so many levels of what, uh, when you are involved in the death of another human being. And so a yes and no in a, in a, and that's just in the killing part of it. Get into robbery and theft and the bifurcations and all the other secondary laws are extraordinary. So the yes or no part of it is just to act like, is to create the, the fake idea that they're not a person of principle. And you are, which he is obviously not. Which is Jake, Senator, like, Senator, could you please just allow her opportunity to respond? Could you please stop you your to... pattern of interrupting me repeatedly? This happened the last time we had a hearing. Whoa, sorry, bruh. He's the chair. You ain't the chair, son. I'm and sorry. You, and you I'll give you, you, call it, you called a vote in violation of this committee's rules. I will give you additional time, but I'd like to give her a chance to complete her answer. I've asked her a simple yes or no question multiple times. She refuses to answer it. Thank you, though, for your input. Let's turn to another case. Uh -uh. <laughs> Seriously, how can you be 100% Adam's apple? Nice. Jacob Blake, which Jacob Blake, that you this is all they answer. Look, this, and by the way, Tom Cotton's entire line of questioning is, didn't these black people really kind of have it coming? I mean, honestly, that, I mean, that's the root of everything. And you guys know um, how I probably stand out from my other um, colleagues in, in terms of this kind of show and the TYTs of the world, and that I, in large part, support what police do. And, and because I'm abundantly aware, by the way, that the police force we have today is not the police force we had 20 years ago, and especially not 50 years ago. It's made up of a lot of people of different races and men and women serving together. Um, and the idea that, they are, that the intrinsic nature of policing itself is somehow intrinsically flawed, I find absurd on its front. But the problem is with this guy, there is Tom Cotton, it seems... And I have not heard his statement on George Floyd, but has certainly never heard of a black, an unarmed man being shot by a police officer that he doesn't like, black, white, or otherwise. So, as much as there's a yes/no answer he's trying to get from her, the yes/no answer you'll get from him on these kind of things is he will always defer in those situations to they had it coming, even if it wasn't for stuff they did that day, which is intrinsically, by the way. Um, a violent attack on our judicial system because you can't get shot. If you're shoplifting and you're accused of domestic violence, those are two different charges and you get two different trials oftentimes related to those type of things. But you have a suspicion that this person is guilty of domestic violence and they sh you catch them shop shoplifting. You don't get to shoot them for the domestic violence because they were shoplifting. Tom Cotton apparently thinks you can. <laughs> 